Hey there, StarCraft fans! It's Falco Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of StarCraft II Legacy of the Void. Today it's going to be a TVT for you here on Yuganatha, the latter edition Bjorn vs. Maru from Asus Rogue 2020, waiting for TSL 6 to release their replays. They say they're working on it, so look for TSL 6 replays soon on the channel. Top right hand corner, we have the Red Terran player, it is Bjorn. And in the bottom left hand corner, it is the blue Terran player. It is Maru! Mmm, yes. Yes, I figured if I'm gonna cast a TVT, it might as well be with the two, maybe the best two Terran players in the world right now. Maru and Beyond kicking butt, taking names, taking everyone to school. Innovation's been good, but I don't think as good as these two have been in 2020. Now, TVT often can be a bunch of tank lines. We can also start seeing things like battle cruisers, which is pretty awesome. Uh, Cyclones are good, Ravens are good. It's an interesting matchup because a lot of different units are good. Marines and Marauders are good, Medivacs are good. Like, I'm trying to think of a unit we never ever ever see in TBT and I don't... I don't think there is one. Cyclones and Hellions and Hellbats and... What am I missing in the arsenal? Liberators and Banshees, all of these things are good. It's awesome. I love matchups where every unit is viable, and I think that's most of the matchup in StarCraft today. Like, I guess you don't really see Carriers versus Terran, for obvious reasons. Uh, you don't generally see Battlecruisers versus Protoss, for obvious reasons, too. It's tricky. I don't know. Look at this. Come on in to the SCV, says Beyond. I've got a Reaper coming. If you want to come stay a while... That'll be just fine with me. Both players going for the Reaper opening into the factory. Exact same builds here in this match. One Reaper name is going to be Imperial Guardsman. This poor nameless soul has found himself flung out of one dystopian science fiction setting and into another. Slightly less awful and was immediately pressed into service as a Reaper. Why couldn't I be a space marine? He wonders. And then his enemy here, the Blue Reaper. By golly, getting some stuff done. It is Morty Smith. In another adventure gone wrong, Rick has left Morty in a life-threatening position as a Reaper in the Terran army. Will Rick save him at the last minute, or will another clone be needed to be created? <laughs> ah, some Rick and Morty shenanigans. Can't wait for the new season. Love Rick and Morty. Great show. All right, so both players, this is like identical build rama stuff here. Although, a reactor is on the way from beyond. Whereas Maru is not reactoring his barracks at all. Hmm. Both expanding. Beyond's is faster. What am I missing here? Is there, uh, there's a starport coming up here for Beyond. A starport on the way here for Maru, but about at the same time. Worker count is even. Maru just has more army, I guess. I guess he squeezed out another Reaper. And a Hellion. He's gonna try to do some damage here in the early stages. Is he really checking for a proxy? I mean, sure, there could be a proxy starport over there, but... Again, I really feel like Bjorn is just one of those players who will just uh, just do what he's going to do. He's going to execute his build and execute it at such a high level that even if you know what he's doing, it doesn't matter, you know? Okay, well this is actually moderately dangerous for Bjorn all of a sudden. Maru coming in, man. He's going to roast up at least a couple of these. Uh, yep, a couple of these SCV. Siege Tank says no! You're not! Get out of my house! Wow. Sea Chink shows up immediately gets a kill. A couple SCVs die, but I'm pretty sure that is reasonable. That's a reasonable outcome here. Ow, the tank fires so bad. Hellions don't regen their health like Reapers do. Look at this chase scene. It's a chase scene right out of a movie. That is the sound of a Hellion chasing another Hellion. Look at him, he just wants those guys. He gets one. Can he get the other one? No, the repair is too good. <laughs> His quest for violence is only met with death. That is often the way of things in movies and in the real world. All right, so I think we're gonna settle down now. Enough early aggression, there's siege tanks for defensive purposes. Both players are going for a Raven, which again, Raven's very good in TVT because they can interfere in Matrix. <laughs> the tanks. Uh, I know that Tastosis calls it disabling them, which is not technically accurate because they can still move. They just can't fire or use any of their special abilities, which tanks don't have special abilities anyway. 
Is this our... Wow. Okay, so... Uh, suicide's in there. Imperial Guardsman. He's dead. And I'm pretty sure Morty already died. Uh, Reaper count seems to be zero for Maru, so yeah, that's the case. Alright, so... You know, it, it did alright for themselves, I guess. As far as Reapers go, it might be more survivable in TBT than any other matchup. Third base. Built on construction here for Bion, and he is coming to kill people. What the? He's just setting up... Really? Setting up Siege here? I mean, I... Yeah. What if an army comes over this way and comes across and comes up this ramp and kills your third? Now, he does a great job covering this path, yeah, but what if Maru goes around? This is a weird place to set up, man. Usually you don't set up siege tanks unless you're in a defensive position or aggressively sieging something because you are a siege tank. All right, so finally decides to move on out here. Army supply is a little bit heavier for Beyond at 32 to 27. Beyond has a better economy as well. So, so far, early game going pretty darn well for our Red Terran player, who is just so fun to watch. It's so good to have Beyond back. It really is. Making it to the finals of a premier tournament after returning from an absence for military purposes is just... No one's ever done it before. Beyond, the first to do that. Such a great, great player. And this is where Morrow's going to try to take a third and have an uh, unhappy realization. <laughs> Which is that his, uh, his marine buddy is completely dead. Uh, it really? SCV comes over. Why would... Okay. All right. Well, here's where an important engagement is. The three ravens? Dang. Three ravens? Okay. It's two from Puyana, I guess. Third base does land. I'm trying to get... There we go. Extra zoom for this tank positioning. Maru making his own Vikings to deal with the Vikings of beyond. We're going to see a lot of siege tanks and a lot of Vikings in the near future. I can feel it in my bones. And yeah, everything's good. I think Maru's able to establish his third. Bion's has been rolling for longer. Bion has one fewer worker than Maru does. But has a bit of a better saturation here in his third base than Maru does. So, advantages? Somewhat, right? Somewhat of some advantages here. Did he just toss down a ton of mules somewhere? I think we might have missed it. Both players going for the upgrades for infantry. Marine upgrades are going to be really good here. Uh, left alone... Tank line can be smashed by a ton of 3-3 Marines stimming in there, taking some shots at the face, and killing the tanks very quickly. So that's why having Marines around is good. You'd think they just get eaten up by the siege tanks, but no, Marines are tough little buddies. They don't take bonus damage from the tanks, and that helps a lot. Look at this, trying to sneak down this way. Maru sees it. His little group of Marines actually make it home. What is this? Auto turret harass? I guess so. You're too late on your turret. That is such insanely good. Auto turret. Oh, okay. Auto turret versus auto turret. Yeah. This is the action we came here for. <laughs> it was actually dumb. Three of Maru's SCVs die in the ensuing chaos. Vikings are chasing down the Ravens, and guess what? Ravens are slow. Ravens are slow, but you want to chase them that far? No, Maro says. Not interested. Fourth base on the way from Bion. About the 11 o'clock position. No sign of a fourth from Maru yet. So he's been behind on the upgrades, or rather the expansion plays. It's not the worst thing in the world, though. I think he's actually probably going to be okay. He's down about 20 supply, but... I don't know. TBT is not one of those situations where it's like you're down 20 supply and then you die. It is hard to break a Terran that is sitting in defensive position even if they have 20 supply less than the attacker, right? In TBT. So I think Morrow's going to be okay for the time being. I'd love to see him take a fourth starting like now, and he is. There we go. So a little bit late, but not fatally so. You know what I mean? Oh, he's going for a drop. Guess what? There are turrets over here. You came through here once. It's not like Morrow's going to be like, Ah, oh, he killed my one turret. Let's not make any more over there ever again, shall we? Siege tanks taking down a sensor tower, putting Morrow into the blind a little bit. Big! It's not a doom drop, but it is quite a drop here in Morrow's main base. Oh, he can deny upgrades. He can deny vehicle weapons. If he wants to, what's he target firing? Nothing. He's just attacking the refinery. 
and the armory at the same time. He does deny vehicle weapons level one for Maru. Beyond in a pretty darn good way here, honestly. Again, Maru is a five-time GSL champion. He is no slouch. That's why I chose to cast this game, is these two players are disgustingly good at this game. Hmm, Farnan, Beyond, not quite interested in jumping in there. It's a great spread on the tanks. This is still happening. I thought the auto turrets would win. They did not. Actually forcing a massive response here. Siege tank finally goes down. Medivacs, well, do not make it home, but hey, they did a job well done there for sure. So it is four base to four base, but 176 to 157 supply. The aggressiveness here of Beyond has really done some good work for him for sure. Once again, Marines with 1-1. One, one. Not quite 2-2 two, two yet, recognizing that Maru's plus one attack upgrade was denied. Which means that Bion is sitting here. Actually, he doesn't have plus one himself. Never mind. Interesting. Another drop. Bion might just be picking Maru to death. Just like picking him apart with just drops. That's a big response for Maru, but guess what? That lets Bion get up on this high ground a little bit. Position himself over here. Stop a lot of the mining that's going on. Look at this. These mineral patches, not usable. Just kidding. Siege tanks are here to save the day regardless. Where are your medevacs? Heal up your men, Bion. There you go. Good man. Maru, defending like a boss, though. He's only down 20 supply. This hasn't gotten worse for him. He's continuing to produce stuff. His macro is insane. Trying to kind of unload here and maybe pick off one of the tanks, maybe another one of the tanks, but the defending marines are too many. Can't get the second tank there, but there's a lot of tanks on the ground for Bion and really... Okay, there's a whole bunch here for Maru too, but guess what? Maru has to lift his third base. His fourth is happy, but his third is distinctly unhappy. Bion might just be snowballing to a victory here, guys. I know... Like... Uh, it's got 3-3 on the way. Maru is just making all of the command centers you could ever want. For some reason, he had like three in production for a second there. There you go. There's your Liberators I was talking about earlier, just briefly mentioning them as viable in TVT because they are. 3-3 three, three coming in. Beyond's is a little bit earlier than Maru's, but I don't see it being a massive, massive difference. And Maru doing a pretty good job defending. I gotta say, his third base was delayed and denied for a little bit of time. Maru's got a fifth base coming up in the top left-hand corner, just constantly producing with these barracks, with these factories. Maru, I was going to say, maybe a bit on the warpath, but this is still just defending his uh, 6 o'clock base. We'll call it a 6 o'clock, even though it's closer to 5.30. Don't you know? Yeah, I mean, the upgrades take a while for Terran, but they're we're getting there. 3-3 three, three here for Beyond, 187 to 173. Income favoring Bion fairly evenly throughout this entire game. 10,000 resources lost for Bion and only 7,000 for Maru. So more money has come in here for Bion, but Maru has been more cost efficient with it. Mainly because he's been the defender. And defender's advantage in TVT is a big stinking deal. Do we still not have any attack upgrades at all? No, it looks like Maru didn't even restart his plus one vehicle weapons. Because Bion's not. Oh man, it would be such an advantage. Oh no! The third base, relatively undefended. Only two siege tanks over here. Marines take advantage, killing a couple SCBs, going after that refinery, sniping it down very easily. Basically betting, daring the tanks to come over. Thinking about dropping inside the main base, but guess what? Maru was there. And oh, that was that went really, really poorly for Bion. <laughs> he does okay, okay. He gets a Viking out of the out of the deal. Not as bad as I thought it was going to be. Top left base is complete by Maru, and again, or Bion rather, and Maru's just been on the defense of the entire game. And that's hard. It is hard to win a game of StarCraft when you're just on the defensive the entire match.
Ah, the Terran soundtracks in StarCraft 2 and Brood War are just good. They're just good. Bjorn's maxed out, so he's going for building armor and high sec auto tracking. And all the good stuff. That's what he's into here today, is all the good stuff. There you go. Zealot bombing, and by this I mean marine bombing these siege tanks. So friendly fire splash hurts them. This is a big push from Bjorn. Wow, just wiped out that tank emplacement pretty easily. Gets another tank, gets another tank. Anti-armor missile comes in on these dudes. They gotta drop off the face of the earth a little bit. Another attack. These tanks are not quite sieged yet. Anti-armor missile does catch the Marines, but no. No answer to 3-3 Marines. Our siege tanks that are alone. Oh, that was 24 SCVs down. This feels like we're GGing it here for Morrow. He's just been on the back foot for too long. He's down 40, 50 supply at this stage of the game. He just lost his fifth base. His fourth base is under direct fire from a siege tank. He's got to bring over everything he has to deal with that, but that leaves the left a little exposed. And here comes Beyond bravely marching up the ramp. Oh, more SCVs getting killed. It's 49 SCVs for Maru. Maru doing the same thing. Marine bu dropping bombing onto those siege tanks. Wiping out a bunch of them, and Maru holds there, but does not necessarily hold. Here it is, Planetary. Oh, the SCV death count is just abysmal. And the Planetary oh, does go down. Just barely. Maru is in all of the trouble right now. Uh, he's on two bases. That's your GG. I don't know what else to tell you. It's 125 supply here for Maru. Uh, he did manage to land an orbital at his fourth base, which used to be a planetary. Beyond's income is through the roof. Way, way better than Maru's is at the moment. Maru going for that counterattack. He's like, look, I've been on the defensive all game. I can't do this anymore. Good anti-armor missiles on both sides. But just too many Marines. Too many 3-3 Marines for Maru to be happy about. Another base coming over here. Bjorn is just way, 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 way on top in this game. Maru refuses to tap. He's at 119 supply. He recognizes he's not in a healthy position. He's muling up. Mule, yes, muling up his fourth base, his fifth base, relands with an orbital that he didn't actually pull from his main or his natural. He's just building them. It's fine. That's why you have them around in case you need them. Big attack from Beyond coming in from the north. Uh, the third base is in trouble again. Oh my gosh. Marine, 3-3 three, three marine damage is through the roof. It's too good, man. Even Terrans would agree here. Oh, so Bion loses that orbital, but guess what? He's got another one here in case he needs it, which he did. <laughs> if Maru comes back and wins this game, I'm going to be flabbergasted stunned. This is just Bion dominance in a lot of ways. Resources lost about even right now, considering Maru or Bion was ahead for a while. As in more lost. That does not bode well for the future of Maru. Every time Maru tries to poke up, it just, it doesn't work out. You know what I mean? I, we're looking at 82. Maru has lost 82 SCVs. And somehow he's okay. Sort of. He's got mules. He's at 29 workers. It's not great. He does have air superiority, which is extremely good in TBT. But every time he defends in one area, Bjorn's in another area ready to kill another base. That is... Three, three orbitals and a planetary fortress killed today. Maru has lost so many bases. Bion is just a base killer, is what he is. Is this the third time this week? Wait, wait, wait. No, no, no. It's gonna be three times this week that Bion's on the channel. So, Bion fans, enjoy the week of Bion. <laughs> That's all I have to say about it. Another anti-armor missile. I noticed that nobody even tries to split against those. It's just like, whatever. Hit us. Technically, you can split off the one unit that is targeted by the anti-armor missile. And its buddies don't get hurt. But even Bion and Maru don't bother. It's like, it's too much. It's too much APM. There's other things the APM that can be used on for better. Mm -hmm. 
Anti-armor missile once again. See the complete lack of split? It's incredible. Bjorn is not letting Maru rest at all. He's like, hey, what was that? You're just gonna try to mine from your fourth base and hope that I don't notice? That's not happening. Wow, this is complete and utter chaos. And that's your GG. All right, Bjorn taps out. He sees the writing on the wall. I guess he was down to 30 supply. So that final battle must not have gone very well with him at all. He was at 106 supply. And then Dion just stutter stepping onto everything. Sheesh. Good game. Good game, Bjorn. Just, yeah, got some aggression up there. Managed to delay that third base mining while getting a fourth base of his own. And that snowballed. Bion is just the master of being everywhere, right? Just the master of, I guess we got about 400 APM for these players, of being everywhere at all times, at multiple locations. You defend one location, feel good about yourself, and then he's over at your other base. It's absolutely overwhelming to play against Bion. Even Maru, even the great Maru, winner of five GSLs, couldn't pull it off here today against <laughs> against one of the four horsemen. I guess Maru is another one. So two horsemen going against it, going against each other here. Bjorn lost 33 siege tanks to Maru's 20. He lost 250 marines to Maru's 144. So, I mean, Maru gave as good as he got. It's just he didn't have the income to produce as much stuff as Bjorn did. That was the key here. This is the reason for the win. There's barely any blue in the last 10 minutes on this income advantage tab, and that is why Bjorn won. Maru played as well as he could. He just couldn't get across the map to mess with Bjorn at all, and he couldn't defend his bases. Sometimes StarCraft is a very simple game that way. <sighs> Amazing. Ridiculous. And all right, you know what? That's going to be it for me today. So this has been Falcon Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of StarCraft II Legacy of the Void. Go ahead, hit that like button, hit that subscribe if you like what you saw and what you heard today. You can also catch me on Twitter, Facebook, Patreon, and Twitch, all at slash Falcon Paladin. And until next time, as always, thank you so much for watching, and you take care of yourself.